I'll so just this, find it a pinch. All right. So this was originally broadcast March 17th, 1947. Oh, cool. So you, do you have music or? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. One week. Can you hear it? Yes. Yep. Not, not very loud, not but loud. yes. That's better. Okay, good evening. Tonight, Lady Esther takes exceptional pride in presenting the Screen Guilds players in Philip Barry's delightful modern classic, The Philadelphia Story. It stars the three brilliant players who made the story so memorable on the screen, Cary Grant, Catherine Hepburn, and Jimmy Stewart, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players in The Philadelphia Story. Tracy Lord's first marriage to C.K. Dexter Haven was dissolved by a vigorous right to the jaw. And now, Tracy is about to be married again. The season's most important event to mainline society in Philadelphia and streamline journalism in New York, which brings us to the office of Mr. Kidd, owner and editor of Spy Magazine. Desembry, you'll take your camera, of course. Connor, you'll take your own special talents. Where? Connor. Yeah, what's the deal? Your assignment will be Spy's most sensational achievement, Tracy Lords. Tracy Lords? Big game hunting in Africa, fox hunting in Pennsylvania, married on impulse and divorced in rage, and always unapproachable by the press. The unapproachable Miss Lords. Now look here, you think that... The Philadelphia story. Closed were the portals of snobbish fox hunting, no, no, wait. No Hunter of Foxes is Spy Magazine. Nevertheless, presented for the first time, quote, a wedding day inside mainline society. Or what the kitchen maid saw through the keyhole, unquote. You're the writer, Connor. I'm only the publisher. All right, publisher, take this, quote, no hunter of buckshot in the rear is cagey, crafty, Connor, unquote. Close paragraph. Close job, close bank account. Look, Mr. Kidd, how could we even get inside the estate, let alone into the house? Oh, it's been arranged. Miss Wallace? Yes, sir. Send him in, please. Now, Liz, wait a minute. We won't do it. It's degrading, demeaning, undignified. So is an empty stomach. Now just relax. We'll have to... Hello. Who are you? Connor, this gentleman has been employed in our Buenos Aires office. I believe he can help us. How? Tracy Lord's brother, Junius, is in the American Embassy down there, and he's an old friend of this gentleman. He'll introduce you to the family as an intimate friend of Junius. Dear old Junius, hmm? Well, does Tracy Lord know this guy? Uh, yes. You might say Tracy and I grew up together. You might also say you are C.K. Dexter Haven, <laughs> And you were Tracy Lord's first husband. Uh, yes, you might. Holy muck, what goes on here? Oh, I remember that honeymoon very well, Mr. Dexter Haven. You and she in a little sailboat. The true love, wasn't it? That's right. How did you know? I was the one photographer whose camera you didn't smash. You were terribly nice about it. Just threw it in the ocean. Oh, one of those, huh? Yes, that's right. I rather thought our honeymoon was our own business. Incidentally, he paid for all the cameras, Mike. I got a sweet letter of apology, too. Oh, always the gentleman, huh? I wouldn't count on that. Now then, what are the plans? The wedding is Saturday. This is Thursday. They should spend tomorrow night as guests of the Lords. 
Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something screwy here. Now, if he's resigned, why he's doing this in, uh-oh. Oh, oh, I get it, mister. You want to get even with your ex-bride. There's one gentleman to another? That may be exactly what I want. I'll have a car pick you up in the North Philadelphia tomorrow noon. Good day. Well, how do you like that? He walks out on us just as though we were... Handkerchief, Mike? There's a little spit in your eye. It shows. Oh dear, so many things to do and so little time. Tracy, when you finish listing those wedding presents. Mother, how do you spell omelet? Two L's, two M's, one or the other. Omelet, that's a funny wedding present. Dina, dear, it's an omelet. This is what? It stinks. Oh, darling, don't say stinks. If necessary, smells, but only if absolutely necessary. <laughs> Mother, if I ever finish writing down, oh, this lamp, isn't it awful? Here, let me see that card. <sighs> oh, yes, friends of the fathers. I wouldn't know. What are they, tap dancers? Or are they just musical comedy producers? Tracy, that's hardly fair to your father's interest in the arts. The arts? The art of putting up a fortune to display the shapely legs of some... Tracy, please. Oh, well, I am certainly glad George isn't like that. Uh, Mother, isn't George an angel? George is an angel. Is he handsome or is he not? George is handsome. I liked Dexter. Really? Why don't you stop the wedding? How? Get smallpox. Oh, please, don't give her any ideas, Tracy. Now, Dina. Oh, gee, Tracy's always so mean about Dexter. Well, darling, he was rather mean to her. Did he really sock her? Dina. Really, Mother, if I don't choke her before Saturday. That would stop the wedding, wouldn't it? It would not. And you're supposed to be riding, young lady. Yes, Dina. They must be waiting at the stables. All right, all right. Mother? Yes, dear? How do you get smallpox? Oh. Dina, please go away. Oh, I'm going, I'm going. Now then, Tracy, let's get those lists finished. Mother, m mother, that whistle. Dexter, Dexter, you're back. Dina, my dream girl, my own true love. Oh no, it can't be. Oh, he wouldn't dare. Mother, look who's here. Mother, it's Dexter. Well, hello. Dexter Haven, you go right back where you came from. I can. Dina says it's too awful here without me. Redhead, Redhead, if you don't look in the pink, that's too nice for George. If you think you can walk in here and... Ah, oh, Dexter, tell me, how is Julius? Oh, Junius is fine. Heartbroken, of course, not to be here for the wedding. I suggested representing him as best man, but... Dexter, I appreciate your offer, but I'm afraid George would prefer to have his best man sober. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'm sure... I'm sure you like the people Junius did send. People? That Junius sent, did you say? Yes, Miss Embry and Mr. Connor. They're waiting now in the South Parlor. You really ought to tell them what rooms they're to have. Rooms? Dexter, have you switched from liquor to dope by any chance? Well, it was Julius's idea, you see. They've been terribly nice to him, and when they said they were coming to Philadelphia... Dexter Haven, you're lying. I can always tell. <laughs> can you, Red? Yes. You have a habit of... 
Wait, just a minute. Now, you went to work after the divorce, didn't you? Not right after. First, I tested several hundred bottles of bourbon. But after that, uh, after that, you took a job in South America. Who for? A magazine. Yes. And it wasn't by any chance Spy magazine? Oh, you're just a massive intuition. Oh, I don't suppose Junius's friends are photographers by any chance. Well, not exactly by chance. Oh, I thought you were low, Dex, but I never thought of you. Oh, you're slipping, Red. I used to be afraid of that look, the withering glance of the goddess. I didn't think that alcohol would destroy your last shred of decency so soon. Oh, I ought to. Tracy, please, Dina. Mother, not yet. Come along, dear. You're late for the ride. But mother, maybe he's going to sock her again. Dexter, I'll have no argument about this. I want those people out of here, and you too. Yes, Your Majesty. First, could I interest you in some small blackmail? No, you... What? Here you are. Kelly proofs. An article complete with snapshots, details, and insinuations ready for publication in Spy. About your father and that dancer in New York. Father and Tina Mara? But they can't... Oh, no, they can't publish this. It's got to be stopped. It is stopped temporarily. If you'll allow Miss Embry and Mr. Connor to turn in a story on your wedding, and when Mr. Kidd says story, he means story. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Yes, dear. An intimate day with the society pride. Oh, I am sick. Too bad. Well, they're in the South Parlor, Your Majesty. Shall I conduct you in? Oh, don't bother, please. I'm sure I know the way. <laughs> I'm Tracy Lord, though I suppose you know that. Any friend of Junius's is a friend of... Uh, so nice having you with us. We're happy to be here. It's a pleasure. Oh, too bad Junius couldn't be here. At least one male member of the family. Where is your father? Oh, darling Papa, I do hope you'll stay for my wedding. <laughs> yes, we'd like to. That was more or less the idea. Uh, the house is rather a mess, of course, uh, but we'll try to make you as comfortable as... <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a cutting little camera. <laughs> I, I take pictures with it. Oh, well, I hope you'll take loads. <laughs> Dear uh, Papa and Mama aren't allowing any reporters in, except for little Mr. Grace, who does the social news. Uh, Mr. Connor, can you imagine a grown-up man sinking so low? <laughs> no, it, uh, it does seem pretty bad. <laughs> You're sort of a writer, aren't you, Mr. Connor? Well, sort of. A book? Mm-hmm. Under what name do you publish? My own, Macaulay Connor. Just try and call me that. Mm -hmm. I won't. Uh, what's the Macaulay for? My father taught English history. I'm Mike to my friends. Of whom you have many, I'm sure. <laughs> English history. <laughs> it's always fascinated me. Cromwell, Robin Hood, <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Uh, where did he teach? Uh, I mean, your father. In a high school in South Bend, Indiana. South Bend? It sounds like dancing, doesn't it? <laughs> and this is your first visit to Philadelphia. A quaint old place, don't you think? Odd customs and such, uh, where the scrapples eat biddle on Sunday. <laughs> but then you're still quite young. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I am 30. Really? One book isn't much for a man of 30. I, I mean, I don't mean to criticize. You've probably got other interests outside your work. No, none. Unless, unless. No. Oh, how sweet. Are you two going together? Well, sort of. Engaged, I presume. No, no. <laughs> oh, but very much in love? Well, isn't that a little personal? Is it? 
but it's so very interesting, Miss Embry. <laughs> Miss Embry, if a man says he loves a girl, don't you think he ought to marry her? Hey now, just uh... Oh please, Mr. Connor, I asked Miss Embry a question. Well, it depends. Oh, I'm disappointed, Miss Embry. I've been very frank with you. However, I'll send a butler to show you to your rooms. Uh, you'll join us, I hope, at the swimming pool. Well, wow. <laughs> That's what I say. Who's interviewing whom? Steady, old girl. Don't let it throw you. <laughs> you want to take over? I want to go home, but uh, since I'm on the job, I'll settle for the swimming pool. Then she came out and he wandered in. Oh! Oh, uh, Mr. Connor. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said to come down here. I, I didn't mean to interrupt your reading. Nothing important, I hope. Oh, you bet. It's very important. <laughs> it's your book. Oh, oh. Oh, I didn't, didn't know you had that. Well, I didn't. I sent to the library for it. Oh. You like it? I like it very much. Especially the story called With the Rich and Mighty. I think I like that one best. Really? Well, I got that title from a Spanish peasant's proverb. With the rich and mighty, always a little patience. I like that. Uh, tell me something, will you, Connor? Uh, when you can write a book like this, how can you possibly do anything else? Well, you'll never believe it, but there are people in this world who have to work for a living. <laughs> yes, of course. But people buy books, don't they? Not if there's a library around. That book represents two solid years of work that netted Connor less than... Oh, that's Dexter. Uh, look, uh, stand by, will you, Connor? I, I don't want to be alone with him. Well, well, there you are. Found you just where I thought you'd be. Fancy seeing you here. Orange juice? Certainly. Uh, don't tell me you've forsaken your beloved whiskey and whiskeys. No. But I think a pale pastel shade would be a better color for me today. How about you, Mr. Connor? You drink, don't you? Alcohol, I mean. Hmm? A little. A little? And you a writer? Uh, Dexter, will you do something for me? Anything, Red? What? Crawl into some small hole until after the wedding. I couldn't do that. At least not until I've... Uh, Connor, don't miss a word. Don't miss a word. Oh, we're going to talk about me. <laughs> Why not? You find the subject fascinating. You're far and away your favorite person in this world. Of course, Mr. Connor, she's generous to a fault. Mm, to a fault, Mr. Connor. Except to other people's faults. For instance, to what used to be my deep and gorgeous thirst. Oh, disgusting. A weakness, sure, and strength is your religion. Well, when I realized I was not expecting to be a loving husband and a good companion, but kind of a high priest to a, to a virgin goddess. Dexter, you... Well, then my drinks grew more frequent and deeper, that's all. Connor, don't you let him make you think that... Why, he's gone. I like him. Dexter, what are you trying to make me out as? Red, what do you fancy yourself as? What are you trying to do with this marriage to, Dor to George? How can you even think of it? George Kidridge is everything you're not. He's been poor and he's had to work and he's had to fight for everything. And I love him and I never even, and I never even began to love you. <laughs> you. Really? You really are in love. Yes, I am and you, Needn't sound so contemptuous. I'm not, Red. Never of you. You could be the finest woman in the world if you could just learn to have some regard for human frailty. If only you'd slip a little sometime. But I guess that's hopeless. Your sense of inner divinity won't allow that. This goddess must and shall remain intact. This woman must represent her class, a special class. 
The married maidens. So help me, Dexter, if you say another word. Hey, Tracy, darling, you there by the pool? Oh, George! There's no high priest. I'll run along. Here, Red, I brought you a little wedding present. Sorry I had no ribbon to wrap it with. So long, Red. A present? I wonder what... Oh. Oh, there you are, my dear. I thought I'd run over and... But Tracy, aren't you going to say hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hello, George. What's that you've got? Oh, a, a wedding present from Jack. De- a picture of the true love. We sailed her up the coast of Maine and back the summer we were married. My, she was y'all. Y'all, what's that? It means, oh, so easy to handle, quick to the helm, fast, and right. Everything a boat should be until it develops dry rot. Oh, George. Right there now, he'll not upset you anymore. He never appreciated you anyway. How could he? Anyone as wonderful as you. Oh, George. That's what I've always thought from the first time I saw you. You're like some marvelous, distant, oh, queen, I guess. There's a a kind of beautiful purity about you. George. That's what everyone feels. They worship you, darling. Oh, George, listen. I don't want to be worshipped. I want to be loved. Oh, you're that too. Well, I mean, really loved. Uh, of course. Oh, and now I'll have to hurry, darling. Big party tonight, you know. I'll pick you up around nine. Uh, well, I, uh, I, oh, uh, Cotter. Hey, uh, uh, Cotter, are you around here somewhere? Yeah, here in the dressing room. Were you calling me? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, Connor, do you ever take a drink? A drink? Uh, Oh, yeah. Yes. Sometimes. Well, that's good. Uh, Let's go in and open a bottle of champagne. (laughs) The second act of the Lady Esther Screen Guild show, starring Katherine Hepburn, Cary Grant, and Jimmy Stewart, will follow in a moment. But first, a word from Lady Esther. Have you heard what's new and smart in Easter hats? Well, there are lots of styles to choose from. Adorable little hats made entirely of flowers. Perky bowlers with rolled up brims. Bewitching bonnets to frame your face with beauty. But here's the one style note that's most important. The new spring hats are worn back off your forehead. They give the world a good look at your face. Well now, how about your skin? Will it have a lovely springtime look to show the world? It will if you use my new spring face powder shade called Bridal Pink. Lady Esther Bridal Pink is fashion right for spring and beauty right for you. Now, at last, you don't have to worry about which shade of face powder is right for you. Here, for the first time, is one shade of face powder that's right for four basic types of skin. If you're blonde, bridal pink will uh, will dramatize your blondness, make your skin look softer, more alluring. If you're a brunette, Lady Esther Bridal Pink will intensify the contrast, make you look so much more romantic. If you're a brownette, bridal pink will give an exciting lift to your whole appearance. And if you're a redhead, bridal pink will wake up your skin and give it the life and warmth it needs to go with your hair. Buy a box of bridal pink tomorrow. Don't wait for spring. Start now to use this lovelier face powder shade, which makes even a bride look more romantic. And now, Lady Esther presents the second act of The Philadelphia Story, starring Jimmy Stewart, Katherine Hepburn, and Cary Grant. Well, that bottle of champagne was just the first. Later, at the party on a neighboring estate, Tracy and Mike sampled quite a few more. 
until George departed in a huff and left Mike to escort Tracy home. That's where we find them now, just arriving with a bottle they've brought along for the road. Well, well, here we are, Professor. <laughs> no, it's funny. I never noticed this light before. <laughs> Silly, that's the swimming pool. <laughs> oh. You know, champagne's tricky. I used to bourbon. Bourbon's a slap on the back. Champagne, champagne's a heavy mist before the eyes. Oh, a quick swim will fix that. Dexter and I always swam after parties. Let's forget about Dexter. Have a drink. <laughs> Why not? Mike, Mike, do you hear a telephone ringing? I did a little while ago. No, I, I can't hear. Well, now, yeah, I do. No, well, it's very far away. Oh, that's my bedroom telephone. Oh, and it's probably George. <laughs> oh, I better go in. Oh, no, no. No, it stopped. Fine. Drink your champagne. <laughs> that is a good idea. <laughs> Hello, you. Hello. <laughs> you look fine. I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the party? <laughs> sure. The prettiest sight in this fine, pretty world. The privileged class enjoying its privileges. You are a snob, Connor. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, Tracy, hey, hey, you can't marry that guy. George? No, I'm going to. Why not? You don't match up. Oh, Professor, you're stepping out of character. My mistake. Oh, don't apologize. Who's apologizing? Oh, really? I never knew such a man. I guess I... I never knew a girl quite like you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Tracy, you're wonderful. There's a magnificence in you. <laughs> Mike. A magnificence <laughs> that comes out in the way your eyes and in your voice and in the way you stand and the way you walk. There's fires blank down in you, Tracy. Hearth fires and holocausts. Mike, you don't think I'm like a goddess. Your flesh and blood, that's the blank unholy surprise. You're the golden girl, Tracy. You're full of life on warmth and delight. Hey, what goes on? You've got tears in your eyes. Oh, shut up, shut up. I Oh, oh, Mike, keep talking. Uh, keep talking, will you? What good is talk, Tracy, Tracy? Golly, golly, Moses. Nobody's ever kissed me like that. Tracy, I want to tell you something. Please, all of a sudden, I have got the shakes. Please, Tracy. Oh, it's as though my insteps were melting away. Gee, what is it? Have I got feet of clay or something? Tracy, you're so lovely. Wait, wait, I know. The pool. There's a moon and it's warm and we could go. Now? Now. Yes, Mike, put me in your pocket and let's go swimming. Don't you see, Dexter? I had to tell someone, oh, I could hardly wait till you got here this morning. Yes, but Dinah, my love, are you sure it wasn't just a dress? A dream, perhaps. Well, I can't be positive, but... Good morning. But ho, the bride. In her wedding dress. Such a lovely day. <laughs> Is everybody fine? Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. How fine are you? I, I don't know what's the matter with me. I, I can hardly open my eyes. I, I must have just had too much sun yesterday. It's awfully easy to get too much. 
Tracy, you're not really going to, are you? Going to what? Marry George? After last night? <laughs> last night? What are you talking about? Well, Tracy. Tracy, don't you remember? Well, remember what? I've been telling Diana. It was just a dream. A dream? What, what kind of dream? Well, last night, it was awful late, I guess. I woke up and I looked out of my window and guess what I saw? What? Mr. Connor. Mike? Uh-huh. Sort of coming from the pool with both arms full of something. What do you think it turned out to be? A what? You. And some clothes. And you were sort of crooning. Oh, I have never crooned in my life. <laughs> then what? Then he carried you into the house, and I could hear him take you into your room. Mike and me? No, well, I am going crazy. I am standing here on my own two hands and going crazy. <laughs> what else? Well, after that, he, uh... Good, good morning, everybody. <laughs> oh, good morning, Connor. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. Well? Mike, what's happened to your chin? My chin? Uh, well, you see... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tracy, I didn't get to tell you. When Mr. Connor came out again, George was waiting for him. No. Yes, and Mr. Connor sort of got hit on the chin. <laughs> George? Oh, me. You? You were there too? Oh, good grief. Why didn't we sell? Oh, why didn't you sell tickets? <laughs> I'll say Dexter was there. What a clip he gave me. I'm sorry, Mike. I thought I'd better hit you before George did. He's in better shape than I am. Jax? My, uh, well, will somebody please tell me what happened before I go stark raving mad? On the level. You don't know? Of course I don't know. I don't remember anything. Ah, lucky Tracy. She's drawn a blank. Oh, shut up, Dex. Mike, you tell me. Well, you see... Tracy, Tracy, are you ready, darling? The guests are all here, and the bishop's waiting. Oh, dear, where is George? George, good heavens. Tracy, I forgot. He was here at 10 and left this note. For me? <laughs> I wonder what it could be. Go on, read it out loud, Red. We're all friends. Oh, yes, I will. Listen to this, quote, your conduct last night was so shocking to my ideals of womanhood and my attitude towards you and the prospects of a happy and useful life together. Tracy. Hello, George. Tracy, I didn't dream you, all these people. Why, it's only a letter from a friend. That They're my friends too. I thought I ought to come and explain. I mean, I... Uh... Clear enough, George. You're chucking me over and, and good riddance. Well, after all, I have a point, you know. On the very eve of your marriage... Just a, ma just a minute, George. Mike, why don't you tell him what happened last night? Well, exactly two kisses and one late swim, after which I deposited Tracy in her room and left. You mean, you mean to say that's all there was to it? I do. Why? Was I so terribly unattractive, Mike? So distant, so forbidding that you... No, 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 no. You were extremely attractive and far from distant or forbidding, but you were also, well... Pretty pixelated, Red. Yeah, and, and there are rules about that. Thank you, Mike. I think men are wonderful. 
Tracy, uh, perhaps I was a little bit hasty, but, uh, well, a man does expect his wife to... To behave herself naturally. <laughs> behave herself naturally? Will you please? Well, I'm sorry. Tracy, if you're willing to let bygones be bygones, what do you say? <sighs> Goodbye, George. I beg your pardon? I said goodbye. But, but, but we... You see, you're much too good for me, George. You're a hundred times too good. And I make you very unhappy, most. Very well. If that's how you want it, possibly it's just as well. Good day. Congratulations, Red. Or is that proper without a groom? Maybe we can make it proper, Tracy? Yeah, Mike? Well, I got you into this, so I'll get you out. Will you marry me, Tracy? No, Mike. Th thank you, but <laughs> no. Well, why not? <laughs> because I don't think that nice girl with a camera would like it. And I'm not sure that you would. And I'm even a little doubtful about it myself. <laughs> There goes your wedding music, Tracy. And besides, I made a mistake yesterday. I opened a wedding present too soon. A present without any ribbons on it. Red? Just a picture of a boat. A boat I don't think I've ever forgotten. Red, I've got an old wedding license. The one we didn't use when we eloped. What do you say? Text. A text, are you sure? Not in the least, but I'll risk it. Will you? And uh, I, 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 you, you wouldn't be doing it just to save my face. Why wouldn't I save it? It's a nice little face. Oh, Dex, I'll, I'll be y'all this time, darling. I promise, I'll be y'all. Be whatever you like. You're my redhead. You all set? All set. Oh, never have I been so full of love. <laughs> Mike, how do I look? Like a queen, like a goddess. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Mike, because you know how I feel? <laughs> For the first time in my life, I, like a human being. Thank you, Jimmy Stewart, Cary Grant, and Katherine Hepburn for a most delightful half hour. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Bradley, there isn't an actor or actress in Hollywood who isn't eager to come here and take part in the great work this program does for Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house. Am I right, boys? You're right, <laughs> Oh. And now, before we tell you about uh, next week's show, here's a word from one of America's best-known beauty authorities, Lady Esther. Thank you, Miss Hepburn. Ladies, did you ever come back from a wonderful vacation and everyone have everyone say to you, why, you look simply marvelous, just like a new woman. So gay and fresh and vital. Well, women write and tell me that's the kind of new, fresh, vital look that comes to their skin when they try my romantic spring shade of face powder, my lovely bridal pink. You see, Lady Esther Bridal Pink is not just a new shade of face powder, it's a new kind of powder shade that ends all guesswork about the right shade for you. For this one specially blended shade has the amazing quality of flattery for every type of skin. The, unite, the unique texture of my flattering, of my Lady Esther face powder makes it more flattering too because of the special way it's blended. My powder spreads a delicate film of beauty over your skin, hiding those those tiny lines, those little blemishes, it makes pores look smaller. And because Lady Esther powder is so fine and smooth, it clings far longer than ordinary face powders. 
keeps your skin looking more velvety, smooth. America's most beautiful women will be wearing bridal pink in the Easter parade. What shade will you be wearing? <laughs> Next week, the Lady Esther Screen Guild players will present The Moon is Our Home. It will star Fred McMurray and Virginia Bruce. Be sure to listen. The Philadelphia Story was produced and directed for Lady Esther by Bill Lawrence, adapted by Harry Cronman, and was presented through arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of It Happened in Brooklyn, starring Frank Sinatra, Catherine Grayson, Peter Lawford, and Jimmy Durante. Music on tonight's program was arranged and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Catherine Hepburn can currently be seen in the Metro Goldwyn Mayer picture, The Sea of Grass. Cary Grant can soon be seen in Dory Shear's RKO production, The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. Jimmy Stewart can now be seen in Liberty Films production of Frank Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. This is Truman Broadley speaking for Lady Esther. Thank you and good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Bravo. Hey. Bravo. Much shorter than the movie. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. That's yeah, nice. they, they cut a lot out of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, There's your that's door. That's a great door sound. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bottle that. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Um, I have to say the